Hey, it's good to have you on the show again. In the previous episode, you learned how and which model of DSLR to purchase. You probably got yourself a new camera now. And this episode is dedicated to the choices of lenses that you can have mounted on your camera. Action! Wide angle, 1116. Oh, oh, oh. Mount. That's the first thing you need to be aware of. It's actually very simple. Every lens, <laughs> every lens has its own mount. And if you own a Canon lens, make sure that you ask for a Canon mount. If you own a Nikon lens, make sure you get a Nikon mount. You see, one of the reasons why you bought yourself a DSLR is to be able to shoot different type of pictures. And that determines the different type of lenses that you have attached to your camera. To understand what kind of lenses that you should buy and own, you should know what you love to shoot. Let's go through that list now. You might be someone that loves to shoot landscape or scenery, which means that the picture that you shoot are normally very wide, wider than what your eyes can see. Lenses that are suitable to perform this kind of scenery shoot normally would have a small millimeter number. We'll talk about that shortly. Now, you could be a portrait photographer, someone that loves shooting human. If you love shooting human, the beautiful millimeter in number focal length that you should be indulging in would be perhaps 35 millimeter, maybe 50, 85 or perhaps even 105 millimeter. As you notice that when the number goes higher in the focal length, you actually sort of like zoom in more towards your subject. You could also be someone that loves to shoot flora and fauna. Example, fern leaves, mushroom in the wild, grasshoppers, praying mantis, hairy spiders. If you're someone that really enjoys this kind of photography, we call it close-up and macro photography, you might want to try macro lenses that come in such focal lengths. Oh, if you're one of those photographers that love sporting events like golf, a tennis tournament, sports photography, you are unable to go closer to the action. So you have to zoom in. So you may have to invest in lenses like this and trust you me, they are not cheap. I have with me a Samyang 14mm lens. It's a prime lens. So what I'm going to do is fit it on my Canon. This is a 14mm. So when you put on a lens with a smaller number, like 14mm, now as you can see, you will really see a lot of things in the whole picture. You can see the subject, you can also see the background. So a 14mm lens is really good when you want to capture more things. This is what we call a wide angle focal length. Now what if I change the focal length now? Let's try on a 50mm Canon lens. Now take a look at this one you will realize that it sees way less things than the lens earlier. So the bigger the number, the less things that you actually see in your picture. So it's a tighter crop. Now let's change to another lens. Let's try the prime lens of a Samyang, what is this? 85mm. Now this is going to be even tighter. As you can see, it's a tighter crop of our subject. You see a lot of things not in the picture anymore. The guitar is not there, the colored pillows are not there. So as you can see, the smaller the number, you see more things in your picture. The higher the number, you see way less things in your picture. And that is the meaning of focal length. Many professional photographers feel that having prime lenses to work with are the best. But sometimes it's just not feasible to be changing lens, especially if you're a photographer specializing in shooting events. 
Changing lens is going to be really time consuming for photographers that specializes in actual day weddings as well. So because of that, many of them would prefer to use a good lens that zooms from example 70 to 55 or the 24 70 and the thing is this when you have a zoom lens on you have a variable numbers that you can play with with the focal length let me show you what i mean now this is a 17 at the same time i can zoom to 24 I can even zoom to 35 and guess what? I can do a 50mm on a beautiful model and still be able to do all this cropping without changing lenses. So you must be thinking if the zoom lenses are so good then why do professionals bother themselves with all these prime lenses which you have to change all the time? Now let's be honest many professional photographers still think that the prime lenses are the most beautiful lenses they give you the nicest pictures for instance the Zeiss master prime lens is the preferred lens for many movie makers it's so good that it even win itself two oscar awards thank you thank you thank you thank you to the academy for this awesome. in fact your eyes are prime lenses you can zoom, can you? So that's it. Whenever you can, use a prime lens. Now before you go ahead and purchase yourself those lenses that we talk about, you may want to consider one of the most expensive elements in building a lens. It's not just the elements or the glass that's inside the lens itself, but the chemical coating that's found on the surface of these lenses. This is how they look like when you shine light on them. Now the purpose of all this coating is to prevent stray lights getting out, escaping from the surface of the lens itself. For instance, if you look at the Nikon, they use the nano crystal coating that improves the performance of how much of light gets into the camera. And if you look at the Tamron, it uses this technology in coating called the E-Band, which stands for Extended Broadband Angular Dependency, which allows, as you can see in this diagram, less light string reflecting off the surface of your lens compared to the conventional coating. An example, Tokina. Tokina has this proprietary multi-coating that it has on its lenses. So, proprietary and how much research this lens manufacturer put into the coating of the lenses, that will affect the price of the lens itself. The better the coating, the more exotic they are, you're going to get better performance from your lenses. Now, one of the things that you may want to consider is the ability of your lenses to stabilize your handshake or body movement. How it actually works is simple. Take a look at this. When you have the image going through the lens, what the lens actually does is that it has this moving component within the lens itself. If you move to the left, it will compensate by going to the right. If you were to wobble up and down, the lens would move up and down to counter this. Now, every lens manufacturer will have a different name for their optical stabilization. Example, if you look at the Nikon, you can see the switches here, and that's the vibration reduction. You can turn it on, turn it off. And then if you look at the Canon, this is where the switch is. And most of the time, you actually see them within the lens itself. So the correction now is done within the lens itself, and by the time the image hits the sensor, you no longer get vibration. And finally, the popular brands that you have in the market of lenses. If you own a Canon, I would strongly advise and most professional will tell you, go buy yourself a Canon lens. But then, just like Nikon and Canon, the Canon Nikon lenses are always very expensive. And that's why there are a lot of amateurs and even professionals like me, we sought after cheaper brands. Example, the Sigma, the Tamron, and if you're looking for wide-angle lenses, most photographers will tell you, perhaps you would like to look for Tokina. Tokina are pretty famous for making wide-angle lenses, which are affordable. And if you're a cinematographer, you may want to go for this brand. In Asia, it's called Samyang. And in the other part of the world, they call themselves the Rokinon. 
What's good about them is that they are all primes, fairly affordable compared to the Zeiss Master Prime or Ultra Prime, and all the apertures are declicked. So they're very suitable for cinematography work because the camera these days are built in with video capabilities. So there you have it. These are the brands that are pretty popular when it comes to the different type of photography that you may have. So hey, there's still a lot of photographers who do not know that they can actually change the lens of their DSLR. Very simple. Number one, turn off your camera. Because when you remove your lens, the contact leads might rub against each other, you might spoil your camera or your lens. So, as a precaution, turn off your camera. And then there is this button here, depress it with your finger. And what you do is make sure that you turn your lens. There are only two ways to turn. If you turn there, cannot turn, you turn the other way. And once you have removed this, put the lens with the opening down. This is the mount. Try not to do this. Let me show you why. Because most lenses has a tapered body. The mouth is wider and the mount is smaller. So if you put it this way, it's going to be really dangerous because it's not stable. Not only that, do not put it on the table. It will roll off the edge. Tamron and Sigma will be very happy if it drops on the floor. Buy yourself a new pair of lenses. And then what you need to do is get a new lens that you want to attach on. Remove the cap. This is the cap that covers the mount. Now you notice that every lens would have a marking or dot or even a line. Make sure that this dot and make sure that you don't talk into the body, the opening. Match the dot and the dot like so. And then turn. Again, there are only two ways to turn. If you turn the other way, nothing happens, nothing goes in. Put the dot together, turn till you hear click. And I always like to make sure that it's a firm click. Remove the lens cap and this is how you remove your lens.